Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Kellogg's Pep. P, 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 Pep. Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Today, our man of steel, through his usual superpower, having located Clint Morgan's secret whereabouts, rockets to the little town 50 miles away to continue his search. Before we continue with today's episode in the adventures of Superman, we'd like you to meet Commander Joseph M. Stack, an ex-GI of World War I, who is National Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. Commander Stack. Hello, fellows and girls. Ever since the very first time we heard Superman over the air, I guess every American has cheered him on in his daring and dangerous adventures. And even beyond that, we've learned to think of him as a champion of right over wrong, the champion of justice. Today we look to Superman as an enemy of prejudice and intolerance and all other evil forces that threaten democracy. We, the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, an organization of two million men who have fought overseas against the enemies of democracy, believe that Superman, through his daily adventures on this program, serves as an inspiration to all of us to think, act, and live the American way. Because of this, and because we feel this program makes an outstanding contribution to real American democracy, I have the pleasure of awarding, on behalf of the veterans of foreign wars, a citation of merit to Superman and to Mr. Harry Donenfeld, president of Superman DC Publications, who was responsible for putting Superman on the air, and to the Kellogg Company, whose sponsorship makes this program possible. Will you honor us with your acceptance, Mr. Donenfeld? The honor is mine, Commander Stack. Credit, however, should not go to me, but to the men who produce and write the series, to the cast and to the sponsors. And on behalf of all concerned, I accept the citation with much pride and many thanks. And we want you to know that here at home, we will continue to fight for every good American against the forces of intolerance and injustice. I'm sure I can speak for all of us and for the fellows and girls listening in. Again, many thanks from all of us. And now, the adventures of Superman. An investigation begun by private detective Candy Myers of a recent subway disaster has resulted in the abduction of cub reporter Jimmy Olsen. Candy told Clark Kent he was certain that Clint Morgan, Metropolis Building Commissioner, was responsible because he feared Candy's investigation in which Jim was involved would show him to be at fault for the disaster. Morgan, however, had left the city, presumably on a vacation, and his destination was a secret. But Kent tricked Morgan's secretary into phoning his employer after Kent had left the office, and by using his super sense of hearing, overheard the phone number from the corridor. As we continue now, Kent as Superman has rocketed to the little village of Westbrook, 50 miles from Metropolis, and once more in his guise of the mild-mannered reporter, is in the local telephone exchange where he is speaking to the manager. Listen. I'd like the name and address of the party whose phone number is Westbrook 162. I'm sorry, sir, but we're not permitted to give that information. But this is terribly important. Look, my name is Clark Kent. I'm a reporter from the Metropolis Daily Planet. I'm sorry, Mr. Kent, but we're not permitted... To give that information. I know, I know. But this is a matter of life or death. A boy's life is at stake. I wish I could help you, Mr. Kent. I really do. But we have strict... All right, all right, all right. Must be some way of... Wait a minute, of course. The local phone book. Won't take me long to go through that skinny little book and get the information. Westbrook, Westbrook, 250, Westbrook, 377, 324. Oh, here we are, Westbrook, 162. Now, let's see, Happy Acres Farm. What a name. Pond Road. Now, that fellow says he isn't permitted to tell me where Pond Road is. Oh, uh, uh... Did you find it, Mr. Kent? Yes, it's Happy Acres Farm, Pond Road. Oh, now, I'm you very tell... glad. You really had me quite worried when you said a boy's life was at stake. But yes, as I said, we have very strict rules. I understand. And... Now, now, tell me, please. Where is Pond Road and Happy Acres Farm? Well, it's several miles away, much too far to well, walk. Well, please, just tell me where Happy Acres Farm is. I'll manage to get there, all right? Well, just as you say. Now, you go four, no, about five miles out on the highway until you come to a crossroads. Uh-huh. There's a small store, though, with two gas pumps. You can't miss it. You take the right... <laughs> 
After getting the directions, Clark Kent leaves the telephone exchange hurriedly, steps behind a large tree and strips to the blue costume and red cape of Superman. Then, up, up, and away! Leaping high over the little village, Superman veers and streaks away through the sunny skies, cape streaming in the wind. He rockets above brooks and woodland, plowed farmlands, swerves right at a crossroads, and then checks his flight above a huge farm surrounded by freshly painted white fences and red barns. There, on the veranda of a house painted a dazzling white with vivid red shutters, he sees a middle-aged, paunchy man in shirt sleeves who stands scowling, his hands sunk in his pocket. Well, that's Clint Morgan on the veranda. But I don't see anyone else, except some farmhands in the fields and barns. No sign of Jim. Well, I'll drop down behind that grove of trees, get back into Kent's clothes, and have a showdown with Mr. Morgan. No! You say you're Clark Kent? That's right, Mr. Morgan. But but you can't be. I just talked to my secretary in Metropolis. That's 50 miles away. You were there in my office just a few minutes ago. Was I? Of course you were. I don't understand. Now, look here, Kent. You're playing some kind of a trick on me. No, I'm not. You are. You couldn't be here in Metropolis ten minutes ago. That's impossible. And what did that message of yours mean? What? The frost kills the leaves, and and we expect an early frost this year. (laughs) Or some nonsense like that. I figured your secretary would be curious enough to about that message to phone you, which he did. And so he tipped me off to where you are. What? Now, look here. No, no, you look here, Mr. Morgan. We've wasted enough time. Where's Jim Olson? Who? Jim Olson. I know you had him put away somewhere because he took some samples of concrete from the subway cave-in. What? You did that because you were afraid he'd discover the same thing Candy Myers did. That you were responsible for the cave-in on the new Ninth Avenue subway. I was not. And what's Save more your like... breath, Morgan. Save your breath. You had Candy beaten up for the same reason and his evidence against you stolen. You figured that would get him off your trail. You're crazy. I never had Candy Myers beaten up. Oh? And I didn't have Jim Olson, whoever he is, put away either. I never even heard of him. Now, look, Morgan. Jim's not only my friend, but he's a Daily Planet reporter. Now, I warn you. If you harm a hair of his head, we'll finish your political career and put you behind bars. Do you understand? Oh, look here. Who do you think you're threatening? I'm not threatening. I'm stating facts. Now, tell me where Jim Olson is, or it'll be too bad for you. I tell you for the last time, I don't know. What kind of a punk reporter are you? Accusing me, the building commissioner of Metropolis, of beating up detectives and kidnapping newspaper reporters. Oh, you must be crazy. Oh, no, I'm not. I know where... You don't know anything. Oh, dear, you accuse me of being responsible for that subway cave in Because you were. Candy had a copy of the original engineer's report showing the fault in the rock. That report was first submitted to you, but you ordered the subway tube to be put through anyway. I tell you, the fault developed after the tube was built. Huh. And neither you nor anyone else can prove otherwise. We can and we will. But right now, I want to know where Jim Olson is. I tell you, I don't know. Now, now beat it. You're not a very good actor, Morgan. You're scared. I can see it written all over you. Now, look, are you going to beat it or am I going to have you thrown out on your ear? You're scared and you're a rotten actor. You gave yourself away when you denied being responsible for the subway cave-in. All right, George, can't Your I... eyes give you away every time you lie. Are you going to get out of here? Hey, this is a beautiful layout you have here. Don't tell me you bought this swell farm on your salary as building commissioner. The farm isn't mine. Oh, no? Whose is it? None of your business. The initials on the ashtrays are M.R. M.R. You want to tell me who that is? I can easily find out, you know. Go ahead and find out. Now, All right, all right, all right. I'm going, Mr. Morgan. But you'll see me again quite soon, I think. These ashtrays are very interesting. Very interesting. They tell me a lot. Leaving Clint Morgan scowling worriedly after him... Clark Kent walks to the road, steps out of sight behind some trees, and swiftly resumes his true identity of Superman. Well, the initials on those ashtrays were the tip-off. Now, if I'm right, I'll find Jim in a hurry. There we are, all set. Up! Up! And away! Once more, taking to the skyways, Superman streaks back toward Metropolis, where, at this moment, in Perry White's office in the Daily Planet... Gray-haired editor is saying to Lois Lane... Oh, it's after four o'clock and still no word about Jim. I don't know what to think, Lois. Just relax, Chief. Candy Myers said Clark Kent told him he knew where Clint Morgan is. Now, Candy, sure, Morgan had Jim abducted so that if I he... don't believe it. But Candy said... I don't that... care what he said. I've known Morgan for a long time. 
He's a holdover from the old Mart Higgins regime. And I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw the insurance building. Look, but he's a pussy-footing politician, not a rough, tough ward boss like his old Chief Higgins. He hasn't the nerve to get mixed up with beating detectives and snatching reporters. But can you assure Morgan knows where Jim is? And if Clark does find Morgan, Oh, there's then nothing we'll... in it, I tell you. Nothing in it. Don't say that, Chief. Please, it's our only chance. It's our last hope. Okay, okay. I know we're not licked yet, Lois. I'm counting on Inspector Henderson and his force. I make a lot of cracks about Henderson when I'm mad. But he's a fine young... Yeah, and... well, what the... It's terrible. It's terrible, B. Come on, quick. Oh, golly, creepers, come on. What are come you where? talking about? In Mr. Kent's office. Oh, golly, oh, my God. Oh, come on, Chief. Let's see what Beanie's talking about. His hair standing on end, his eyes popping, copy boy Beanie Martin turns and races toward Clark Kent's office, closely followed by Perry White and Lois Lane. What has happened? We'll know in a moment when we return for the startling climax of today's episode. So stand by. Say, gang, did you ever meet up with a fussy Freddy? You know, he's the sort of fellow who kind of nibbles at his food, never really digs in and enjoys his meals. Well, if you've got any fussy Freddies around your breakfast table, just put them next to a dish of Kellogg's Pep. Why, you'd have a hard time finding anybody who'd pass up the good eating in these crisp golden flakes of whole wheat. That cool, catchy pep flavor gets them time after time. Sure, pep is an appetite tickler from way back. And say, speaking of tickles, who isn't tickled with those swell pep prizes? Three different kinds of prizes, one or the other in every package of pep you open. Remember, you may find one of 24 keen bird pictures with a description to help you identify these birds in the air. Or you may find a colored cardboard model of a fighting plane, easy as anything to assemble, and you can collect all seven of them. Or you may find a bright colored comic button picturing a famous character from the funnies, one of 18 to pin on your jacket. All three kinds of pep prizes are top-notch collector's items. So hop to it and ask Mom to get you Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal first thing. Beanie Martin has just brought Perry White and Lois Lane to Clark Kent's office. There, rushing to the window, Beanie points upward with a shaking hand to where, 45 stories above the street, a human figure dangles from one of the massive hands of the clock on the insurance company building. Good heavens. Chief, look. Now, look at the guy hanging from the insurance company clock. Good country. How do you ever get up there? I can't imagine. Oh, dear, he'll fall. Now, explain these binoculars. I got him from... Oh, golly, look. Let me have him, Beanie. Oh, Chief, if the clock hands break... Oh, there, I can see him clearly now. Yeah. You see, Miss Lane? See what? See what? what, what what's the... Jim, Chief. Jim. Yes. That figure dangling from the clock is Jim. Jim Olsen. Her face like wax. Lois stares through the binoculars to the clock 45 stories above the street, where the tiny figure of Jimmy Olsen swings precariously from one of the clock's great hands. At any moment, the clock hand may break, or Jimmy may lose his grip. How did he get in this amazing and perilous predicament? And what will happen? Tomorrow's exciting episode tells the story, fellows and girls, so don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And remember, for breakfast, it's Kellogg's Pep. For excitement, the adventures of Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Superman DC comic magazines and is brought to you Monday through Friday at the same time by Kellogg's Pep, the sunshine cereal. Say, gang, what makes a famous name famous? Well, Kellogg is famous as the greatest name in cereals. And one reason is Kellogg's shredded wheat. Those are the plump, tender biscuits made to fit your breakfast bowl. Fifteen. Fifteen of them in every package. Each biscuit toasted just right and full up with natural nut sweet flavor. Mom knows Kellogg's shredded wheat is good for you, too. This is whole wheat. So remember Kellogg, gang. Ask Mom for Kellogg shredded wheat. And be sure to be with us tomorrow for the thrilling adventures of Superman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.